be looking at some ligaments um, that are going to be holding the pectoral girdle in place. The very first one we're going to start out with here is letter A. Maybe I'll turn it this way so you can see the letter A well. All right, And this is going from the acromion process to the clavicle. So it is the acromioclavicular ligament. Typically when we name ligaments, we name the two places that they're attached to. And we also go from the stable end to the less stable end. So the acromion process is more stable than the clavicle, clavicle being a smaller bone. So a chromioclavicular ligament. We go down here to B, we have the caracoclavicular ligament. Caracoclavicular ligament is B, right? And that is again sort of holding this clavicle in place, making sure the clavicle doesn't flop around in effect, right? So going from the coracoid process to the clavicle caracoclavicular ligament. This one is kind of an interesting one because it is um, essentially a, a ligament that is on the same bone. It's all on the scapula, so the caracoacromial ligament. And in this particular case, we go from the coracoid process to the acromion process. This is actually going to help stabilize this whole region here for the arm uh, to be held in place. This is called the glenohumeral ligament, going from the region of the glenoid cavity to the humerus. And this one covers the entirety of the, pretty much the entirety of the uh, uh, joint of the arm, of the humerus. There's also another one on kind of the interior, and that one is going to be the caracohumeral ligament. So this goes from the interior of the coracoid process, is actually broken on this model, the interior of the coracoid process to the uh, greater tubercle of the humerus. All right, so those are indeed the uh, ligaments of the shoulder, which of course is the pectoral girdle.